Welcome back to FAIR TV. I'm Janine Jackson. Corporate media have always had a curious algorithm when it comes to protest movements. Some deserve attention and some don't. Tens of thousands gathered in Raleigh, North Carolina in what some were calling the largest civil rights rally in the South since the 1960s. An outgrowth of the Moral Mondays movement, the rally sought to draw attention to the hard right turn in the state's politics on a range of issues from voting rights and inequality to reproductive freedom. But as Think Progress noted, the march was basically absent from the national media, except for some discussions on MSNBC. Well, media can't be everywhere all the time, of course, but it does remind some of us that for a few years, any event with the Tea Party label was considered big news, and how many people were involved didn't seem to matter. We can recall the time in 2010, CNN sent an 11-person crew to cover a Tea Party gathering in Tennessee. There were only about 600 people there, as opposed to at least 80,000 in Raleigh, but then they'd heard Sarah Palin was going to speak. Speaking of media attention, are you thinking about the 2016 presidential election? Well, for most people, the answer is probably not. But political journalists aren't most people, so they're already busy trying to figure out just how formidable the still non-existent Hillary Clinton campaign is. Nothing is happening, but it's still prime fodder for Sunday chat shows. And for the front page of USA Today, where Susan Page wondered what we could expect the election to look like, since it's a mere 1,000 days away. Why bother? Beats us. But the comparison didn't even make sense on its own terms. Her point was that the political landscape today is nowhere near as frightening as Election Day 2008, when the nation faced the early days of an economic collapse. But that's apples and oranges, isn't it? The real contrast would have to be with a thousand days before the 2008 election, when unemployment was relatively low and there was little worrying about the budget deficit. But why should we be comparing political landscapes a thousand days before elections in the first place? The only real lesson seems to be that bad campaign journalism can start anytime they want it to. And finally, PBS has started airing a series they're calling The Pension Peril, a look at the state of retirement funds for public workers. Now, the title alone suggests a certain point of view, one that treats pension obligations as simply unaffordable, an idea that many economists challenge. But a new report from journalist David Sirota might help to explain PBS's approach. The pension series is being funded by the Laura and John Arnold Foundation to the tune of a $3.5 million grant to New York Station WNET. Who's John Arnold? Well, he's a former Enron billionaire whose foundation promotes cutting public workers' pensions. Sirota reports that it was PBS that sought out the Arnold funding his name does appear in the underwriting credits, but there's nothing to suggest that the reporting on the issue is sponsored by someone heavily involved and invested in a particular policy outcome. Does this violate PBS guidelines? It would certainly seem to. Their policies state that when there exists a clear and direct connection between the interests of a proposed funder and the subject matter of the program, the proposed funding will be deemed unacceptable regardless of the funder's actual compliance with the editorial control provisions. Elsewhere, PBS makes clear that if viewers conclude that the network has sacrificed its independence, then the entire program service of public television will be suspect and the goal of serving the public will be unachievable. PBS station WNET responded saying that Arnold Foundation does not have editorial control, which as their own rules state, is beside the point. Public broadcasting exists because of an awareness that sponsorship affects content. By saying, well, it really doesn't, it's almost like they're admitting that there's no reason for public television at all. I'm Janine Jackson. Thanks for watching FAIR TV.